So normally in vinaigrette dressing, oil is the base of it, but instead of oil, we are gonna use a tomato, which is nothing like oil, but it works because it's a soft vegetable or fruit to be technical, but um, cucumbers, tomatoes, anything that's like soft makes a great base for a salad dressing. So just cut your tomato. I just say one medium tomato. You don't have to use one whole tomato. You can use cherry tomatoes or smaller tomatoes, whatever. We're gonna put these in our blender here. And then I like to cut out that middle section. And I do chop it a little bit just to help it in the blender. And I leave the skins on, leave the seeds in. Okay. All right, so we have our one tomato in there. Next, we're gonna put a third cup of vinegar. I'm using the Bragg's apple cider vinegar here. And what, da, 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 there we go. About a third of a cup. I like this vinegar because it's less processed than a lot of other vinegars. And it's a little bit sweet, which I like. We're gonna do two tablespoons of mustard. These are my magnetic um, measuring spoons. I love them because they stick together and they have two ends and one of the ends is elongated, elongated, so you can stick it into jars more easily. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of mustard. I am using the good old Westbury Natural Stone Ground Mustard, no salt added. And you can sometimes find this in health foodie stores, but what I do anymore is I just order four at a time online and then I'll always have them around. Okay, and when I'm measuring mustard, you can just estimate that way, but what I like to do is just run it over a little bit of water, run the measuring spoon under the water and then the mustard comes out a little bit easier. So there's one and there's two. Rinse that off. All right, so next we're gonna put in a teaspoon of ground cumin. If you don't like cumin, you can leave it out. You can put something else in that you do like. This is what I'm using today, ground cumin seeds. If you want any even more flavor, use a little blender to grind your own cumin seeds. That will give you extra, extra good flavor. And then last, we're gonna put in one clove of garlic. Where did I, there it is. So this is just one clove of garlic. And we're gonna put the blade on and that is it. I only make salad dressings now myself. I never buy salad dressings from the store because it's really tricky to find salad dressings that don't have salt, oil, and sugar. If you find one and it's oil-free, it'll be having extra of the other things that I don't want. So I just make my own. What do I do with my paper towels? There they are. Um, and they're so easy to make at home. Once you kind of make a couple, get a couple under your belt, they're really easy to make. When I'm feeling super lazy, I'll just do balsamic vinegar or I'll do some of this Bragg's apple cider vinegar, vinegar with a little bit of the mustard and just mix it right on the salad. All right, so we're just gonna blend this till it's pretty smooth. And this is very low tech. You just line this up with the notch and then you turn it to the right. And I often give this a little extra blend just to make sure, sure that those tomato skins are nice and broken down, which it looks like they are. All right, and that's kind of a, oh, smells so good. This is the same dressing that I use on my four bean salad, if you've ever made that. Um, but you can also just make it as a standalone dressing. Now these do come with lids. If you wanted to just use a little, put the lid on and put it in the fridge, you could do that. Salad dressings that I make at home, I usually like to 
use up mm, three or four days because there's lots of good fresh stuff in there. And then I will just put it into a jar or container. If there's some little chunks in there, I see some little chunks, that's fine. And it's got a nice pink, kind of pinky brown flavor, but doesn't that look like your, your house vinaigrette uh, dressing, the kind of the color? All right, so one dressing done. If you want, this makes like, uh, what do I say? One and a half cups. If you have a bigger family, you wanna make more, just um, double it. All right, I'm gonna rinse this because I'm gonna use it for my next dressing. Ranch dressing. Okay, so I grew up on ranch dressing from the Hidden Valley packages. Did you guys use that? And I just love that. So when I created this recipe, I tried to recreate that flavor and that taste. And I think, I think I did a good job. So you tell me when you make this. So instead of, oh, what do they use as the base? Mayonnaise or sour cream or something like that. We are going to use some good old cashews. If you don't like cashews, you can use another kind of nut or seed. You could probably use tofu, I haven't tried it. But you need some kind of fat, I think. I mean, you could, use, you could do my trick of using white beans instead of cashews. It just wouldn't have any richness, but it would still be creamy and white. But today we're gonna use the cashews. So whenever I use nuts and seeds, I always start with unsalted, unroasted, because that's healthier for us. And so what I have here is a half cup of cashews and a half cup of water. And the cashews have been soaking for a little bit. Now cashews are already a soft nut, kind of like a pine nut and a walnut. They're just softer nuts as opposed to an almond, which is really hard. Um, so technically you could not even soak your cashews, but I, I like my dressing to be super, super smooth. So I do tend to soak my nuts first. All right. And then we're gonna put in three tablespoons of lemon juice, which I haven't measured out yet. But I know from experience that one kind of medium regular lemon is about three to four tablespoons. So I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna squeeze it. And if you do use, whoops, this kind of juicer, just make sure to put the flat side down so it, all that juice is going through the holes. I mean, I could measure it since I'm doing it into this little bowl, I guess. And then just give it a good squeeze and you're kind of turning it inside out and making a little hat out of it. And if you don't have fresh lemons, you can use the bottled lemon juice, but I like to say fresh is best if you can get it. Okay, oh, da, 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 da. All right. So let's go ahead and measure that since we can easily here. About three tablespoons. Next, we're gonna have just a little bit of vinegar, just a, table, just a teaspoon, just for a little different kind of tang there. Again, if you don't like vinegar, leave that part out. Um, okay, then a half teaspoon of granulated garlic and granulated onion. Now, sometimes people will ask me, can I use fresh garlic? Can I use fresh onion? You could, but with this recipe specifically, again, I'm going off the Hidden Valley pack idea, memory, and that was all dried stuff. So I think it tastes more closer, closer, more closer, funny language there, uh, to what we're used to if we grew up on those packets, if we use the dried stuff. I use granulated, you could use powdered, that's fine. And so this is my granulated garlic, and this is my granulated onion. I do tend to use granulated a lot because it disperses nicely in soups and stews. It doesn't um, clump like the powdered can. All right, 
So, and then we have two more ingredients, a green onion and dill, but we're gonna add those in in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and blend all this, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then we'll put those things in because if you remember, ranch dressing has the little green specks in it, and we don't wanna obliterate those by over blending them. All right, so I'm gonna blend this. All right, so this is just one green onion. And then we're gonna add some dill, which I have not cut yet. So let me do that. So we're gonna use some fresh dill here. And how much do I call for? Two teaspoons. You know what I do nowadays is I just kind of eyeball it. And, um, Cause I love, love dill. If you didn't have fresh dill, you could use dried. I like a lot of dill in this. All right, now we're just gonna blend this till we can still see the little flecks in there. Okay. Go. All right. So there we go. It is a little light green, that's fine. You can see the little specks, that's what we want. So I have a salad here ready to go that we're gonna put our dressing on because on the cooking shows, they always finish it up for you. And this ranch dressing will thicken as it sits. So feel free to add a little more water and re-blend if you come back to it the next day and it's too thick. Um, I didn't put this in a very pourable container, so I'll just use a soup spoon. So there's our ranch dressing. Couldn't you trick people with this? If you have company someday or someone you're living with already, just make this and uh, mm, it's just so good. Even if something that we're emulating like ranch dressing isn't exactly like it, that although that is pretty close, if it tastes good, people won't care. They won't care. All right, and then let's put a little a little of the tomato vinaigrette on. Oh, that smells so good and so fresh. Mmm, mmm, so tangy. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming today. 